Hello YouTube. As you can see, it's not me in front of the camera this time. This is Mr. Jesse Hemphill, friend of mine from Alabama, a good knife maker. He uh, makes a lot of Damascus, uh, does some gorgeous work, and uh, we're going to be showcasing some of that on here. And uh, today though, I thought since this is his first time here and we had him in front of the Stump of Doom, we would do some chopping. What else? And what we're going to be doing it with is a knife by Jeremy McCollum. Uh, I've been using this thing a fair amount and it, it is really nice. It's heavy. Uh, I'm going to list the specs right down there. You'll see those. And um, it's one of those knives that you don't have to work hard with. If you swing really hard with it, you're going to tire yourself out. There's enough mass and it's, it's thin enough and broad enough. You just let the knife do the work. So I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Jesse. I've been showing him some of the mechanics of cutting uh, through wood this morning. I'm going to let him demonstrate. And basically what I did, uh, let me get something I'll show you real quick. Here's um, have the, uh, the Enterprise here. Um, I was explaining to him the difference between hitting the wood like this, where you're literally going across every grain at the same time, and it it barely does anything. It makes a makes a line in there. But if we turn this and we hit it on a on a compound angle, in other words, we've got it on a compound cut in this direction, we've got it on a compound in this direction, away from those wood grains. You can make, I think this is broke somewhere, but in just a few cuts, you can just whack it right off. So I'm gonna let him uh, do a little cutting on this with that and just get his impressions of it. And uh, again, this, this one's for speed, for snap cuts. This thing, just let the blade do the work. Let me get out of the way because I like my arms and legs and Jeremy Bell's a really sharp knife. Now how hard is barely, it? Barely, just barely touched it. And I didn't use any power at all. And look, we're another cut and we're out. We're through. If I hit it right. That's on me. I'm not used to doing it. But. And bear in mind, this morning, in fact, just a few minutes ago, is the first that I, Jesse has seen any of this. So, um, I really like this knife a lot. It's got a stick tang. Jeremy had some concerns with the uh, the strength of the handle versus the mass of the blade. I've been doing a lot of work with it. I haven't been able to break it yet. And uh, being this time of the year, it's it's really going to uh, get a workout now. You can feel when you get the sweet spot in it. There's just, I mean, there's just no. Yeah, and Jeremy, uh, and look, Jeremy, excuse me, uh, Jesse, Jesse, oh sure, it's like glass. And Jesse just brought up a good point. Um, a lot of people when they first start cutting, if they have a blade this size, they'll try to cut out here. And what you want to do, each blade has a sweet spot where the harmonics of the knife, the, the balance, everything come together to really push the blade into the wood. Now let me give you an example. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Jesse the camera and have him hold it on here so we can, we can do a close shot. So as usual, there's no pre-planning in my videos. You guys know that. That would be way... That would just be against tradition. So just if you look in the back and just keep it right about there, I guess. Um, okay. What I'm gonna do is purposely cut completely cross grain. And I'm gonna show you guys something. These are very easy swings, but this is how you can determine where the sweet spot is on a knife. Let's go way out here at the end and we'll just do a little. And you see what I get? Just a tiny little line almost nothing now let's go 
back here about where I know the sweet spots to be. Just the same piece of wood. Again, we're going to go across grain. See the difference? Even cross grain when I hit the sweet spot. And any you can take any knife. As I go out, it gets less. When I get to the sweet spot, it really buries. And below that, it's, it's okay, but you can tell, you can feel it in the handle. There'll be no shot, no vibration. It'll just dive in there. Now, Bruce, you're not using any power at all. You're just letting no, the... No, I'm letting the blade do the work. There's no reason for me to swing hard with this blade. There's so much mass to carry it through there. Um, there there's just no reason at all for me to really go at it. Now, let me walk you guys back to the tripod. But if you want to look around here, I've got to trim all this up so the snake don't drop down on top of me when I'm cutting the grass. And Jeremy's knife is going to do all of that and a lot more. And just as a, as a quick wrap up, I'd like to show you, do you have, you have one of your knives down here, don't you? Yes, right here. Um, here's a, uh, one that we've been messing with a little bit this morning. How, could you go behind there and, because I can't tell, is it showing pretty good? Yes, sir. Okay. This is uh, one of his Damascus that he did. He does a lot of, um, a lot of Damascus work and uh, really is, is pretty darn good at it. And we took this one out this morning just to see what it would do. Uh, he brought a, a bunch of knives. He's going to have a bunch for sale before too much longer that he's, that he's going to start working on. So uh, I'm going to be testing these, see how they do. Uh, he's also going to be using um, uh, regular homogenous steels like um, uh, 5160, 52100. And uh, so I, I can't wait to see what he's going to come out with. But uh, that's, that's pretty much it for this time, just a, a quick video. We did some work with this, and for its size, uh, it really, really performed quite well. Um, I always liken Damascus to plywood. Uh, people think that, that maybe it's a super edge holder or something, it's not. But what it will do is um, it's, it's like plywood because you have all the different layers of steel running in all different directions. So you can get a lot of strength out of it. And that's its, that's its real strength, if you will, is the fact that it can be made very strong for its size. And uh, sure doesn't hurt that it's really pretty stuff too. Yeah, and Bruce, now the only I edge quench everything so that the back of it is always going to be springy and tough. So, uh, and the uh, ricasso, the tang, and all that is not hardened at all. So, it has a lot of flex to it. It should have a, a, a should be tough it. to try to break it. It shouldn't snap. Well, and yeah, if it does, we will find out because that thing will tell us right there. Yeah, and. Um, We've, we've got some special stuff we're cooking up. If you want to come around here, Jess. Okay. Um, we've got a few special things that we're cooking up. And uh, I can't wait, especially one of them, I can't wait for you to see what it's going to be. Uh, something that you had not seen in a long time, I bet. And something that's really cool, I think. But it's going to be a little collaboration. I'm also going to go over to uh, to Jesse's workshop. We're going to film him there forging, um, you know, actually making some Damascus, forging out some homogenous steel blades, and I think it should be uh, just a just a bunch of fun. So that's pretty much it for this time, YouTube. You guys take it easy, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you.